Hello, my name is Jesse Hayes and I'm the Automation Group Manager here at Shunk. Today we're going to be talking about a new technology we call the Adhesive Gripper. So this product is going to help engineers who are seeking to um, have a, a very easy, simple gripper solution to handle a variety of work pieces and surfaces without tooling change. And for this gripper technology, we've looked to bio-inspired design and in particular the gecko. And if you look closer at a gecko's foot, its foot gives it the ability to climb up objects like glass or glass walls or buildings and really any surface uh, texture. And if we look even closer at their foot, their, each toe has tens of thousands of these hairs on them called setes. And if you total all of these hairs up on a gecko's feet, uh, they're able to grip about 300 pounds theoretically um, on the right surfaces. And over the years, there's been many, many uh, different researches that are done and formulas and principles. And today we're going to simplify it. We're not going to talk about all of those different uh, principles and research. We're going to talk about one in particular. And that's called Van der Waals forces. So Van der Waals forces are a distance-based um, force at a molecular or atomic level between two surfaces or two materials. And when we look here at this graphic, we see that we're making contact with our synthetic hair structure and the positive and negative aspects of the atoms align and create an attraction or an adhesion force. And the further away, like this other example, those forces aren't able to be formed. So it's a very basic uh, principle of, of Van der Waal forces. And if we look even closer, some of the gripping parameters that we have to consider are the contact surface area of, of the objects we're gripping, uh, surface roughness, surface flatness, the parallelism between our adhesio, adhesio pad and the part. And depending on surface area, or, or surface finish I should say, we have different um, contacts that, that happen with these hair structures. The first one is called a partial contact. And so there you don't get as much adhesion force as a, as a good uh, flat surface contact. The next one is a complex strain. So this is where the, the uh, hair piece is um, deformed slightly and not making a flat contact. Then we also have bending or buckling type contact where the surface is raised enough to buckle the hair. So these three different scenarios decrease from the gripping force and also is why it makes it ideal to grip flatter, the flatter, smoother surface, the higher the forces can be generated. So some example parts are glass. Glass is probably the best surface to grip. Uh, painted metals, polished metals, plastic injection molded parts, electronic circuit boards, electrical components, ceramics, uh, we can even grip cardboard that has uh, printing on it, so not raw cardboard, but printed like uh, most of the packaging and advertising packaging that's out in the market. Also some fabrics that don't generate lint, so synthetic fabrics, uh, carbon fiber, paper, so really a broad variety of materials can be gripped with this technology. And we've been able to replicate to some degree this gecko's um, hair structure with using some special polymers and molding processes. And when we look at this product, we, we call the whole assembly a foil. And the foil is made up of a, a foam backing material or a substrate. And there we have three different um, force or durometers or stiffnesses of that, that foam backing. We have a soft, a medium, and a hard. The next element are the hair structures themselves. And here we have different uh, lengths of these hair structures from 700 microns, 50 microns, and 25 microns in length. What this does is allows us to customize these gripper pads to best suit the type of surface and material that you're going to be gripping. And if we look even closer here um, and, and look at the pad material, the pad when we're gripping the ideal situation of glass one square centimeter of this material can lift one kilogram of weight. 
And if we put that into a little bit different perspective, if you think about the size of a dime, a dime is about two and a half square, or square centimeters, and that two and a half square centimeters is able to grip two and a half kilograms, or a dime-sized piece of this material can lift a five and a half pound piece of glass. So pretty remarkable for the size. Then if we look at a larger uh, pad area, like 50 by 50, we can see that this payload when lifting uh, something like glass can lift 25 kilograms, but the pad itself only weighs nine and a half grams. So the payload to weight ratio is pretty dramatic and gives you a very good advantage to not take up robot payload with tooling weight. So when we start, start talking about adapting this technology to robots, we have uh, several different things here. So first we use the robot's motion to apply a preload to engage the part, which gives us the adhesion forces and allowing us to lift the part. So to release a part, we have several different methods. One is called a topple, where we just use the robot to peel off the part. Another is called a turn, where we have to have the part nested and fixtured, and uh, we rotate the gripper material off of the part. Another is called press, which is really preloading, but applying an overload of preload force to break the bond or the adhesion to the part. The next is the push, where you go down and you also have to nest the part and then just uh, have a lateral motion to slide the hair material off. And also looking at some different applications, we have a really broad application range. We can handle parts that are less than 30 microns in size, but up to three meters in size. So these, these devices or these pads are very customizable to different applications. Uh, also, we can handle very sensitive parts, very lightweight, delicate parts, as well as parts that can't have any marring. So if we look at uh, semiconductors as an example and the substrates that they're produced on, typically if you were to grip those with a vacuum end effector, you leave a residue. Well, this gripping technology leaves no residue behind, so it's very clean and safe for sensitive parts. Uh, a couple of other things with precision, so we can have repeatabilities uh, up to one micron. We've already talked about the gripping force of one kilogram per square centimeter of this material. And it's also very efficient. Uh, this is a completely passive device and requires no additional power to function. Now let's look at some applications that um, show its capabilities. And this first application that we're going to be looking at is picking up an electronic circuit board. And here you can see that. Now we're going to zoom in on that a little bit. And you can see it uh, engaging with the preload force and picking up the part. And now you see it coming down and doing a turn to release the part. Now we're just picking up some various electronic components and placing them into a breadboard. And here on most of these parts, we're doing a twisting motion to release them. And then here's a little bit of a close-up of a couple of those. Here's a specialized gripper picking up an aluminum uh, piece of sheet metal. And here's an interesting application with a small gripper pad picking up um, packaging material. So the first part there was a printed cardboard cover, a piece of paper slip, a plastic cover slip, and then in this case a candy tray. And as it reassembles it, if you notice the, the roller off into the back left of this video, that's a 3M adhesive material that allows us to clean the adhesive pad. So if you're picking up parts that are dirty or dusty, the pad can get fouled and needs cleaning periodically in some applications. So you can simply put something like this roller in place and have the robot's motion clean the gripper head. Now here's an interesting application as well, picking up paper labels off of a label backing material and applying it to, in this case, this small glass part. So, you know, you can really grip a wide variety of work pieces with this 
technology. Here we're picking up a small diameter ball, steel ball bearing. And when we release it, we're going to be using a press to release where we, we over preload to release. Here's a small gemstone that we're picking up as well as an example. And a small surface mount um, semiconductor component. And with that, that's our Adhesio product. So I want to thank you for joining me today to talk about Adhesio. And please be sure to visit our website for more information on Adhesio at shunk.com forward slash Adhesio. Thank you.